I'm Jeff Stewart, licensed marriage and family therapist and the host of this podcast, From Crisis to Connection. I've got these four pillars of a connected conversation, which I feel like must happen. And you'll recognize these so much, Jeff, because it's so much EFT here. But pillar one, I say, is you have to assume good intentions. So if your spouse is coming to you and saying, all right, hey, here's my struggle. The assumption of good intentions means that they didn't wake up and think, I know how I'm going to hurt my spouse. I'm going to spring this whole faith thing on them. You know, so if if so, if your spouse is bringing that to you, or if you're sharing it with your spouse and they're and they're upset or they're they're sad, there you have to assume the good intentions that man they're they're trying to process this thing. So and I so I feel like there's pillar one. Pillar two is you can't say you're wrong. You can't put out the vibe of I don't believe you. So and it, because if you do, and you'll start to notice if we violate any of these pillars, I mean the conversation is going to devolve. So right. even if uh, all right, I'm going to assume the good intentions. They're telling me that they've had a faith journey. I can't say, and you'll, and, and I've had plenty of clients do this, where they'll say that to their spouse, and their spouse will say, "No, no, no, you're not. You've just been hanging around the wrong people, or you've been reading the wrong things." Right. You know. Right. Right. So what? Are, what's one supposed to say? So then, pillar three is you have to ask questions before making comments. You can't just say, "Okay, well, I just want you to know that I don't know if our marriage is going to survive, but okay, fine. Tell me what your experience has been." You know, you have to ask questions first. Tell me about your experience. Tell me more. And then I, and then sometimes even the hardest one is uh, this pillar four. I say you have to you have to stay present. You have to lean in. You can't go. A lot of times people can assume the good intentions. They cannot say the person's wrong. They'll ask questions and then they'll say, "Well, I, I guess uh, I guess we're not going to have the marriage." I always thought, you know, and and that's where they can slip back a little bit sometimes into to victim mode because they want their spouse to rescue them. They want their spouse to say, "No, no, you know what? I, I won't I won't read those things anymore. I won't I won't think this anymore." I'll, I'll go right back to where it was. And so that's where I kind of feel like the EFT thing is gold as far as being able to have the conversation. And like we were saying earlier, I feel like the goal has to be, you have to put the, we'll resolve this on hold and it has to be just to be heard for a little while. And that's where I feel like it can be scary, but you know, the, the, the to be heard mm-hmm. is to be healed. I mean, oh, I love I that. Know. What are yeah. your thoughts? To be, he- yeah, to be heard is to be healed. I love that. It reminds me of something Brene Brown said in her famous, uh, her very first TED talk she gave, The Power of Vulnerability. You can look it up on YouTube. But mm. she says in there, she was just as humans, like the second that we experience vulnerability, she says we work so hard to make the uncertain certain. Oh, and okay. right. And that's exactly what happens <laughs> in these cases. It's in, in terms of like, well, what's going to happen to our marriage or what's going to happen with your, oh, your, yeah. your eternal salvation? What's going to happen to our children? What's going to happen to it's like we're wanting to like write the last chapter, close the book make a decision so we can just get back to feeling secure again. But mm. when somebody, when somebody opens up about their journey, their transition, where they're going, boy, it, it just, it just kind of is a gut check there about, okay, am I willing to stay in the uncertainty for a little bit? Yeah. Am I willing to stay with this and like stay with this person? Cause the truth is, is that they're not certain. And yeah. now we're being invited into a place where we can be with them in there, or we can go right to certainty and probably push away the relationship. I, I love that. And I hadn't thought, I, I love that concept too. Cause the, with vulnerable, I didn't, yeah, with vulnerability, vulnerability, you want certainty. That's absolutely true. Right. And, and I, let me say this, cause I know we're going to run uh, out of time sooner. We should do a part two or someday. That's or exactly yeah, what I'm oh, sitting here home. thinking. I'm like, Tony, you're coming right, back. Home and away. Two. Then you, okay. Or then you come on mine and we'll do a home and away. That'd be a blast. That's what we got to <laughs> do. Okay. So, um, but so I feel like one of the things I want to make sure we get from if people are resonating with this or, um, but that doesn't mean that the person who has had the journey that I, I don't want you to feel like, okay, I can say whatever I want to. And now my spouse has to assume good intentions because I feel like there needs to be almost a, uh, a, a warm up round of, you know, hey, I, I want to be able to share some things with you, but let, how are where are you at right now with that? Yeah. Or, and because because we don't want to say you need to understand. That's where I kind of go back to the truth, beauty, goodness stuff. I mean, that's where I, I go back to the stages of faith is not about pulling someone out of a box or forcing someone, you know, into four. It's not about that. It really is about. Yeah. Tell me more. Sometimes people need some time to process and, and, and understand before anybody's going to throw out the, hey, guess what I've read? And uh, as a matter of fact, I, I typically say that, yeah, let's hold off on the, let me show you what I've read for a little while. Let's kind of get into more of the, take me on your journey. You know, take me on what, what caused you to feel uncomfortable in the box. You know, t- mm-hmm. take me on the, what was that like? And what was your process? And what were the times where you, where you maybe sought help? Or what were the experiences that you heard from leaders? Or, 
you know, let me hear a little bit more about that. And then I'm going to have a little bit more runway to get to the, okay, that, you know, then, then what happened? Thanks for stopping by and watching this little clip of my podcast interview. If you want to catch the full episode with this guest, you can click on the link below. It'll take you to my podcast and you can listen to the whole thing. Once again, I appreciate your support. I've got lots of other episodes you can check out as well. And I'd love to hear what you think about it.